Hey Bill, can you prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the Earth is a sphere and not flat? Because I have a lot of Facebook friends who say that it's flat, and I just can't convince them. Thank you. Is the Earth flat or round? Speedwalker, quick, take this dynamite and douse it in that bucket of water down there! Right. In America, you can be anything you want to be. Just remember, heel toe, heel toe. <laughs> Speedwalker! It's round. Okay, now let's see. How do we go about proving that? Go to the uh, seashore. Go to a seashore and figure out why you can't, if you live on the East Coast, figure out why you can't see Spain from the East Coast of North America. It looks like you might have a, a St. Louis hat on. I'm not sure. Um, just go... Uh, to the middle of the Mississippi River and look south. Why can't you see the Louisiana? Why can't you see New Orleans? What's, what's the problem there? Well, then climb a tower or go to the top of a hill or a mountain, and you'll see a little farther, but you will not see to the other side of the earth, places we know to exist. For example, I've been to London. I, I can tell you, other people have. I've been to Vancouver, British Columbia, and you cannot see Vancouver, British Columbia from, from Boise, Idaho, let alone from New York City or Toronto or what have you. Just start there. Then if you're... <laughs> I found this photo from Grandmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Very interesting. Here's what's happening. This is a, a good example of a superior mirage. So Joshua was on the Lake Michigan shore. He was looking towards the west, and Chicago's beyond the horizon. Should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky up in space. But instead, we're able to see it on the Lake Michigan shore. If you'd like, look at pictures from space where you see the Earth as a sphere. Those pictures are not faked. And I'll tell you, just if nothing else, here's why you can tell they're not Every picture we have from NASA of a planet is a artist rendering. They're not real pictures. If you take a strong telescope and look at a planet, it looks nothing like this. It looks like a self-illuminating light. It looks more like a star. Um, they used to call planets uh, wandering stars. Next, Saturn, I've looked at myself through high-powered telescopes, and it really looks like a light bulb. It doesn't look like it's reflecting light. The rings are lit up. Um, there's none of these colors on there. Um, and these are just artist renderings. And if you believe that they're real, um, you're just sadly mistaken. Next, we recently had uh, Pluto, uh, pictures of Pluto, the one uh, at kind of center bottom is the most recent one and that was taken by a probe that was whizzing by pluto pluto's spinning there's barely any light out there and it gets this perfect uh brightly lit crisp clear image of pluto and transmits it all the way back to earth you know where we can barely get cell phone signals you know when you go out of town um go to the next one and if you look at it again disney style they show us this ridiculous picture and pluto is actually on on pluto they're they're literally laughing at us just to create the paperwork that NASA has created for in NASA in this one case, just the paperwork to send anything out in space, to send people into orbit or to send them to the moon, that amount of paperwork would make faking it prohibitively expensive. No one could afford to generate that much, that much documentation. You want to put something in context, if you want to do something with three and a half trillion dollars, you can do whatever you want. Theater. Whatever you judge to be important to the profile of the nation that you are trying to build and to sustain.
Then the other thing, if you want to get into this, if you're really serious, if your friends are really serious, have them get on a boat or a ship and go out at sea, and you'll notice you can't see infinitely far. Furthermore, if you get into it enough, pick up a, a book about navigation or go online and learn about navigation. A very, very important thing you have to take into account when you try to navigate the ocean from a ship or a boat is how high you are off the sea surface. The higher you are off the sea surface, the farther you can see, the farther away the horizon is. Oh, my. Now, this discovery that the world is round was made uh, I'm gonna, in 15, it was published in 1540. Now, I'm concerned it was Copernicus. I'm concerned it might have been 1530, but it was about then. It was in the 16th century that the Earth was shown to be a ball. Uh, but it was known to be a ball by a lot of other people before uh, Copernicus in the Western world, what we now call the Western world, Western Hemisphere. The ancient Greeks uh, noticed that from time to time, the Earth casts a shadow on the moon. This is a lunar eclipse, where the moon gets in the shadow of the Earth. The sunlight is being blocked by the Earth. The moon's on the far side of the Earth. And that shadow is always curved. And the only shape that, only, that always produces a curve, no matter what the orientation, that is to say, whether you're standing in Greece at night, or if you're standing then 12 hours later in Buenos Aires at night, the curve, the, the shadow is always curved. So the ancient Greeks knew that the Earth was a ball. They didn't know to the degree of, the size of it to the degree of precision we know now. If you want to say Earth is flat, then, for example, lunar eclipses. What's a lunar eclipse? This is Earth, mm -hmm. and the moon is over here. The sun is always casting Earth's shadow into space. It's always there no matter what. Right. Obviously. Okay? It's just a shadow. It's a shadow. The moon it's occasionally... It's just a shadow shining on blackness. On, yeah, a shadow in darkness. It's a shadow in darkness. So, so the moon occasionally passes through that shadow. And if you see the shape of Earth's shadow on the moon, it is always round. Always round. It is a segment of a arc of a circle, no matter the orientation of the moon and the sun. And the only thing that makes a perfectly circular shadow would be something that's perfectly circular. Perfectly spherical. Spherical, right. yes. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. Right. Okay? No matter what angle no matter you shot. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate. And officially it's an oblate sphere. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good word. It's like pear shape. Yeah. So it's not actually a sphere. So it's not actually a sphere. So it's not actually a sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. And you guys, come on. Everybody watches newscasts. You all use mobile phones. You all see airplanes fly around. You all go to uh, see Ed Sheeran in concert one day in London, another day in Melbourne, Australia. This all depends on our fundamental idea, understanding of the size of the Earth and its shape with extraordinary precision. And if you want to get into it, the Earth isn't quite a sphere. It's a little bleh. Its spin is a little bleh. stretched it, made it slightly oblate, as the saying goes. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time 
is a perfect sphere. Right. This is all susceptible to analysis, but spend some time uh, it's, uh, learning about navigation. Tell your friends to spend some time learning about navigation. Uh, navigation's changed the world, by the way. What are you wearing? You're wearing stuff that came from another part of the world on a ship. It didn't get here by magic. It got here through science. <laughs>